We're going to try to beat chimps on every BTD game, meaning we'll beat Bloons Tower Defense 1 through 6 without losing any lives, making extra money, selling any monkeys, or using any perks that make the game easier, like monkey knowledge or special agents. Starting with the OG, we have BTD 1, one of the greatest games of all time, being an absolute S tier on cool math games. Anyway, we started off with two dart monkeys in the top middle of the track. They popped round 1 no problem and made enough money for us to place down a third dart monkey. We put them just above the first two, and this trio took out the the next couple rounds without letting any balloons get by the first pass but this gave us the money for you guessed it another dart monkey even with this guy though the balloons started making it to the back half of the map but because of where we placed our darts we had plenty of defenses back there to stop them from leaking heading into round six we got a fifth dart monkey to help us with the pack of greens heading our way this is kind of a funny start as none of our dart monkeys are upgraded but it's what we had to do if we didn't want to leak anything this managed to pop round seven's massive number of blues getting the last of them near the end of the track and this gave us enough money for a new tower the tax shooter this guy shoots tax out in all directions but has a pretty short range so we put him on the inside of the first curve and started the round this way more of his tax hit balloons with each shot and he helped out the dart monkeys quite a bit this round was full of reds and blues making us enough money that only a little bit into round nine we could afford another tax shooter putting it pretty close to our first one and thank goodness we got it down when we did because the layered greens and blues were tough to take out even with the second tax shooter the balloons got farther than ever before as one of them made it to the very end of the track before getting popped but this is when the difficulty of the run really picks up stronger and stronger balloons are being sent every round and preventing all of them from leaking is pretty tough we got a third tax shooter down in this area for round 11 and between the three of them they were able to pop most of the yellow balloons down to blues or reds though two yellows did get past them over the next few rounds we got down two more tax shooters but this time in a better spot down bottom we started with the tax shooters near the beginning to help take out these strong and fast layers but now that that's done we can put some back here to mass pop some weaker balloons this curve is quite a bit tighter so on average more of their tack should hit we got the second one between rounds 14 and 15 and then we pivoted to something new we started upgrading our tack shooters instead of buying more of them making the three up top shoot faster this was one of our first power spikes as we were handling the rounds just fine and making good money in the process the only time it got hard was round 18 as a balloon almost made it to the end but beating this round put us at over $1,000 in the bank by far the most we've had this run and with that money we purchased a bomb shooter this guy has tons of pierce and is an expert at popping dense packs of balloons as his explosions can damage tons of them at a time right away we saved up for a second one getting it in the middle of round 21 their impact wasn't felt right away but once we picked up the bigger explosions upgrade on one of them they started making a huge difference now we just had to make sure no single fast balloon gets past our defenses as this can waste some shots of the bomb shooters so we picked up faster shooting on the two tack shooters down bottom to make them more consistent as well on round 25 we purchased bigger bombs on our left bomb shooter and we were off to the races or so i thought as round 26 was the scariest so far a green balloon made it all the way to the exit barely being popped in time but we kept our 40 lives intact and continued on but round 27 is the real reason we have three tack shooters up front and two in the middle to pop the black balloons that are immune to explosion our bomb shooter should be able to clean up everything as long as the black layers get popped to help with this we bought piercing darts on every single dart monkey this lets their darts pop more balloons per throw making it more likely that they'll pop some black layers unfortunately there aren't targeting options in this game so every tower will try to pop the balloons farthest along the track so we just have to hope that the black balloons get popped early enough for the bomb shooters to take them out getting all of these upgrades took some time but afterwards we got a third bomb shooter bought bigger explosions and then got an ice monkey on the right curve i tried to place it where it freeze balloons inside the bomb shooters range but outside that of everything else this way the bomb shooters would have more time to explode balloons and the tax and darts would wouldn't be wasted on frozen balloons as they can't pop those we picked up extra range on the right two bomb shooters to make this more effective but the balloons were still getting very far i mean round 34 had a yellow make it to the end and almost get through that would have been a disaster we picked up another bomb shooter in the middle and it was quickly made clear that we could handle everything for the time being as long as the black layers were popped so we hoped we could continue this streak and started our biggest save up of the day four thousand dollars for a super monkey there were several close calls but on round 41 we got him down there were plenty of good spots for me to place him but up front is what i decided on he could still help quite a bit with the back of the track but we need him most for the black layers this worked amazing and let us save up quite a bit of money again a couple black balloons kept making it to the ice monkey though so we got a new dart monkey in the bottom right to try to pop them as frozen black balloons were tricky for us to deal with but frozen yellows were pretty easy but after this we easily made it back up to four thousand dollars and 
got down a second super monkey on 45 and a third one on 48. This might have been enough to win as is, but we spent the rest of our money placing towers and picking up random upgrades just for fun. Round 50 is the last one of the game, so I figured we'd try to get as many of our monkeys fully upgraded as possible by the end. But this combination of towers was more than enough to beat round 50, and just like that, BTD1 was beaten on chimps. Now, I should mention that this challenge was made by the YouTuber Naj Room, and he challenged other Bloons tubers to do this, so we'll be following his rules, which will be important in a bit. On to BTD2, which actually has difficulties instead of just one map and mode like BTD1 had. We booted up hard, started with a new monkey in the boomerang, and hit play. The first round went off without a hitch, as the boomerang popped several balloons with each throw. Round 2 was a bit harder though, as we were going to leak several red balloons, losing the challenge right away. Now, we could have stopped them with the brand new road spikes, which you can place anywhere on the map, but I figured spending money on these as early as round 2 was not the play. So, we started over with two dart monkeys. This was able to beat rounds 1 and 2 just fine, and let us get a third one down for round 3. Things were going great, but round 4 was where that ended. In attempts to pop everything, I spent all my money upgrading one of our dart monkeys, but three balloons still got through, and we couldn't afford any road spikes. Third tries the charm. We did the same start, getting up to three dart monkeys, but this time on round 4, I put down a road spike at the end of the track to stop the balloons from leaking. This let us move on to round 5, and we had the money for a fourth dart monkey. I put him near the back of the track to clean up any balloons that get that far, but even this was not enough. Again, we needed a road spike at the back to stop the balloons. This was starting to take a toll on us as each spike pile cost $30 and only pops 10 balloons, so we were slowly getting poorer and poorer. This wasn't stopping though. We needed another spike pile for the end of round six and placed our fifth dart monkey in the middle of round seven. This handled most of the balloons, but once again, we needed a spike pile at the back continuing the cycle of spending money on spikes that we couldn't really afford. Luckily, round 8 was pretty easy as it was just a bunch of reds and blues and our darts took care of them all. I was hoping we'd turned a corner, but round 9 put us in our place. The groups of greens were just too much as we needed a whopping 4 spike piles to prevent any leaks. I would have felt defeated, but this let us afford our first non-dart monkey of the run, the tack shooter. We put it in the top right curve to help out with that track and round 10 only took 1 spike pile to beat. Not bad, but this is where it fell apart. Round 11 introduced yellows and they blew right past us and I didn't get all the spike piles down in time, so we leaked a few balloons and had to start over. Before doing so, I quickly peeked at Najroom's run to make sure it was possible and I found out he did this on the medium map, so that's what we're going to do. Hard mode is definitely possible with a bit of leaking and selling, but beating that map on chimps would have been brutal. If you can pull it off, you should join the Discord and post your run in there. But we're going over to the medium map that resembles BTD1. I started off with the boomer on the right side and beat the first two rounds with it. This guy was great as he starts with two pierce and has enough range to hit three different sections of the map. The only thing is that his targeting is a bit wonky, so he'd miss every once in a while. Not a big deal though, as the more balloons are on screen, the more likely he is to accidentally hit them. But after round Round 2, we picked up the multi-target upgrade, letting him pop up to 5 balloons per throw. This let us coast all the way to the end of round 4, where a couple misses by him let some balloons get by. Not ideal, but we easily picked them up with a single pile of spikes. After this, we spent the money to support the boomer with a dart monkey. This worked great, but once again the boomer's misses caused us to use a spike pile when we shouldn't have had to. This happened again on round 6, but then we could get another dart monkey, which we put right below our first one and got some much needed consistency. Our boomer excels against large packs of balloons, while the darts are there to pick off stragglers and whittle down these stronger layers of fast ones. Slowly but surely, we worked our way through the rounds, placing down more and more dart monkeys until we got all the way up to 6 of them. The rounds during this time were fairly easy, as we only had to use a spike pile some of the time, but that brings us to the the mid teens where we saved up for a bomb shooter. We got this in the middle of round 16 where it got a few shots off, but we still needed two spike piles to get through without leaking. This is where we hit our stride though. Between our three types of monkeys, the balloons didn't stand or float a chance. After just one round, we could afford bigger bombs, making our bomb shooter much more effective, and we were popping the rounds before the balloons even made it to their final pass. We got two more bomb shooters, upgrading them both to bigger bombs, and there was nothing the balloons could do about it. That is, until round 25 when the black balloons started heading our way. We could crush yellows and below with explosions, but because black balloons are immune to them, they caused us problems. So, just like BTD1, we got some tack shooters to solve this. We put three of them in the first little loop and upgraded them all to faster shooters. This provided somewhat reliable black popping power, but we still had to use road spikes every once in a while if a black balloon got too far through the map. To increase our odds of popping this layer, we slowly made all six of our dart monkeys piercing darts. This lets their darts pop more balloons per throw, which will hopefully let them pop more black balloons. In the middle of this, we 
face round 30 once led. These guys are immune to attacks and darts, which shouldn't have been an issue as our cannons can pop them, but it allowed the black balloons inside to mostly get past attack shooters, leaving it up to the darts to pop these layers. This is where piercing darts came in clutch, letting us get most of them, and we cleaned up the final few with a pile of spikes. Now, I was sick of our boomer missing reds right before the exit, so we got long range darts on the four dart monkeys near the middle of the track. This way, they can reach the far right pass and hopefully pick up any balloons that the boomer would miss, saving us from having to buy road spikes so often. This instantly paid itself off on round 33, as we now have a swarm of darts ready to be thrown at any balloons that make it that far. Still though, the only time things did get that far was if black balloons got past attack shooters untouched. So we spent the next 10 rounds or so placing a ton of attack shooters and a few dart monkeys. What's funny is that our three bomb shooters were still the main damage dealers, it's just that we needed this many other towers to pop the black balloon. But in the mid 40s, we started making money so fast it was clear we could make it to a super monkey. We saved up the $4,080 and got it down near the middle of the track. This guy will be great for cleanup and black popping power. Now, we just had to save up for laser vision, as that'll be a massive increase in damage. There was just one problem. I didn't realize we're on round 50, the last round of the game. So while I should have been spending all my money to beat this final round, I was saving up for an upgrade we wouldn't be able to get. Oops. And to top it all off, I wasn't able to drag enough road spikes onto the track in time, and we leaked down to 12 lives. Not only was this a start over, because we're not allowed to leak in our custom chimps rule set, but the game also mocked me with a victory screen. Oh well, we did basically the same thing over again, but this time instead of saving a ton of money at the end of the game, I picked up epic range in the middle of round 50, placed down two tack shooters, and started spamming road spikes at the end of the track. And with this, we had more than enough popping power to beat round 50, giving us the chimps medal for BTD2. On to BTD3. The game that in my mind propelled the balloon series into the massive success that it is today. We started off with two dart monkeys in the middle of the map and upgraded the left one to extra long range darts, letting it see tons of the map. This basically kept the balloons at the start, but we knew that wouldn't last too long, so we bought piercing darts on him as well, increasing his pierce from 1 to 2. I thought we'd have to spam dart monkeys to get by like we did in BTD1, but these two got through the first few rounds just fine. From here, we saved up through round 5 and placed a tack shooter in the top left of the map. This is an excellent spot for him and he'll make the balloons much easier for our dart monkey to take out. The first round he was down, he lowered several green balloons down to blues, letting us pop them before they made it halfway through the track. The money we got from this round went right back into that tack shooter as we bought faster shooting on it. From here, we got another faster shooting tack shooter right next to the first one. Together, these two were menaces, absolutely bullying the balloons at the start of the track. We knew this wouldn't last forever though, so we got down two more tack shooters pretty close to the dart monkeys and upgraded both of them to faster shooting as well. These two curves were made for tack shooters and let us save up for a bomb shooter. It's funny how widely the price of this guy has swung between the games so far, as in BTD1 he was $900, in 2 he was $585, and now in 3 he costs $785. We put this guy by the first dart monkey and hit play. Once again, I plan on having bomb shooters be our main source of grouped popping power, so we know we have to look out for groups of black balloons. To get ahead of this, we slowly upgraded all four of our tack shooters to blade shooters, making them more likely to hit balloons when they fire. We probably should have upgraded them in a different order though, as the leads in round 20 got by the first two tacks before a bomb shooter could pop this outer layer, making it tough on the rest of our defenses. And this was the first round we had to use a road spike. Kinda sad as I wanted to go all game without one, but it's not the biggest deal. We finished up making our tacks blade shooters, and then we went on to pick up bigger bombs. It's kind of crazy how much better this increased blast size makes the bomb shooter, but I'm not complaining. Then, we saved up for a second cannon, getting bigger bombs on this one as well. Our defenses were looking solid, but on round 26, we ran into the same issue we had on round 20. Leads. Leads got past our first two tack shooters, and the balloons inside them caused us trouble. To deal with this, we picked up frag bombs on both our bomb shooters and got down a spike a pulse at the end of the first straightaway. This guy has a ton of pierce and will hopefully be able to pop all the black balloons that get this far, and the bomb shooter should be able to take care of the rest. We instantly started working on getting every upgrade for this guy, so he throws three massive spiked balls at the balloon. And this is the first game where we get some control over which balloons our monkeys target. Our two options are first and last, and because He's on a straightaway, putting him on last will get a ton out of his pierce. After this, we got down a monkey beacon, the precursor to the monkey village. We put it where it can affect everything but the spike pulse and upgraded it to a jungle drums, giving everything inside its range extra attack speed. Then we saved up our money until round 37, where we faced the first Moab of this challenge. Now, I struggled with this in the past, so I did the easiest solution I could think of. Place a ton of spike piles on the track and glue some of the insides. This works perfectly, and I don't even think I needed the glue, but it's the 
funniest item in the game and I had to use it. Next, we got an Ice Monkey in the top right and slowly upgraded it to its max. This way, it'll be a great stalling tower for our bomb shooters if anything makes it that far which the balloons almost instantly did, but this time our ice bomb combo worked perfectly and let us start our save up for the super monkey. Balloons constantly made it halfway through the track as they routinely got to the ice monkey only to get frozen, but round 41 was a bit sketchy. The rush of balloons was so thick and dense that it was instantly eating up all of our spikeapults pierce. This let tons of balloons get past the ice monkey, but we were only a few hundred dollars off the super monkey and I was not about to lose. So I placed a ton of road spikes to guarantee passing the round, but I might have placed too many. But this let us get a super monkey in the middle of round 42, which was pretty good timing as we would have needed more road spikes without it. This guy was placed in such a good spot for some black popping power up front, general damage in the middle, and he could even clean up leaking balloons at the back. It was perfect. Even with this though, we needed a ton of spikes for the end of 43. We probably wouldn't have needed these had I spent our money on more towers, but we were trying to save up for laser vision. We got this in the middle of 44 and it lived up to the hype. We instantly pushed the balloons back to the start and even popped the Moab at the end of the round without any glues or spike piles. But then we had a decision. Do we get super range so he can see and pop the frozen balloons in the top right, or do we get the monkey storm on our beacon? This was not hard at all because obviously we got the monkey storm upgrade. Now we have the most powerful ability the game has ever seen, plenty of upgrades left to get, and only a few rounds left. My plan was simple, spend nothing until we either had enough for plasma vision or for a super monkey storm. I thought this would be pretty tough, but because we make so much money in these final few rounds, we could kind of do both. We used to storm on round 47 and could afford plasma vision by the end of 48. Now we just had to balance the storms with getting more range on our super monkey, and once we had enough money for both, we purchased the upgrade. I'm glad I played it safe though, because we needed a storm for the end of this round too. But that brings us to round 50. We used a super monkey storm to clear the screen of everything but the two moabs at the end of this round. Our super monkey was able to take out the outer layer of both and we popped the insides with another storm. I know I used this ability more than I had to, but it's a BTD3 classic so I had to spam it. And just like that, we beat BTD3 on chimps. On to BTD4. We booted up the first map on hard and saw that we actually needed to unlock monkeys in this game. Luckily, I was already level 8 from a previous time, but we had some grinding to do. We played one game to get used to the monkeys, get access to all the towers, and start unlocking the tier 4 upgrades. And because we knew that this was just a fun run, we put down at Banana Farm. The interesting thing about BTD4 though is that they went away from the two path upgrade system. You don't really have a choice on upgrades other than to buy it or leave it alone. But once we were almost level 17, we started over and began our chimps run. We started off with a boomerang monkey as that was one of my favorites back when I used to play on my iPod Touch. This was able to solo the first few rounds as its targeting was much better than BTD3's and we got enough money to upgrade its pierce and buy an ice monkey. We put the ice monkey in the first loop and saved up for the boomer's sonic boom upgrade which lets its rings pop frozen balloons making it pair pretty well with the ice monkey. Then we upgraded the ice to a permafrost making balloons slower even after they thaw out. Between this slow and freezing the ice monkey was giving our boomer plenty of time to pop everything. We didn't even need to use spike piles to clean up as nothing was getting past these two. But we had the money to spend so I upgraded our boomer to a glaive thrower. This lets each attack pop up to 12 balloons and then we got down another sonic boomer. I figured our first guy has the pierce to handle any big rushes while the second one could help for spaced out stronger balloons. To also help out with these we picked up a glue gunner, a new monkey to the balloon series. This guy has always been one of my favorites so I had to get him down and we set his targeting to strong so he slowed the fastest balloons. I can't explain express how nice it is to have these targeting options again. I didn't realize how much I'd miss them when playing the first few games. But with that, we were off to the races. All three of his upgrades were super cheap, so we got him all the way to a corrosive glue at the end of round 16, and any balloon he hit was no longer an issue. He couldn't get them all though, and yellows and pinks that weren't glued were getting pretty far, to the point where round 19 made us use our first pile of spikes. Time to get some more damage. And what better way to do that than a monkey ace? Also making its first appearance in the balloons games, the ace is very strong because it doesn't have a platform that you have to place down, meaning you can place it on top of the track or really close to your other towers. We picked up its pineapples and spy plane upgrades as fast as we could, this way we don't have to worry about camo balloons going forward. I'm not really sure when camos come in BTD4, but the spy plane upgrade gives nearby towers camo detection, so I'm no longer worried. Next, we upgraded the ice monkey to a snap freeze, meaning it'll pop a layer of every balloon it freezes, making our lives much easier. With this upgrade, we went back to popping the rounds pretty easily, and we were able to upgrade our other boomer to a glaive thrower as 
well. But this brings us to round 28, the first round full of leads. And unlike all our previous BTD runs, we don't have a map full of bomb shooters to take them out. Luckily, Snap Freeze can pop leads apparently, so we were totally fine. But this started our big save up for our first tier 4 upgrade, the Lightsaber Thrower. An absolutely goaded upgrade and is the reason why we all loved the boomer in this game. $2,000 was a bit tricky to save up to, but between our defenses and a few road spikes, we were able to get there in the middle of round 31. I would like to say it instantly cleared the round for us, but we got it slightly too late and had to clean up some balloons with spike piles. Needing cleanup was actually the case for the next round too, because we were rushed tons of white balloons which are immune to our ice monkey. To help with this and the future Moabs, we got back to our roots and bought a bomb shooter. We set him to strong and oh my goodness, camo started coming. Not an issue because of our spy plane, but it was weird seeing them pop into several pinks instead of just being a balloon modifier. We upgraded our bomb shooter all the way to a missile launcher before getting a second one down. I was a little worried though, as every once in a while the rounds would get super far, like round 35 which needed more spike piles than any round so far. I think a maxed out glue gunner would solve this, but we aren't a high enough level yet to get its tier 4 upgrade. So we just got our second bomb shooter to a missile launcher and continued on. This did fine for the time being, but I wanted to even out our damage a bit more. So we upgraded our ace to a rapid fire and saw we wouldn't unlock its tier 4 upgrade for a while. Upset, I got the at home version of this upgrade by getting down another rapid fire ace just to the left of our first one. These guys not being synced up should make their damage more consistent and I loved it when they would drop their pineapples at the very start of the track. Then, to avoid placing any more spike piles, we got a bigger stack factory at the end of the track to protect the exit. Don't ask how I placed it on the water, just accept that it's back there. With this, round 40 was here. There wasn't a Moab, but I figured it'd be coming soon. So we upgraded both our bomb shooters to Moab Maulers, as that makes them deal 10 times damage to blimps. Then we upgraded our second boomer to a lightsaber thrower. If I remember correctly, these guys do extra damage to blimps on top of having tons of pierce, so they're super strong for the late game. Then we buffed everything with a jungle drums beacon and got a summon whirlwind wizard to the left of it to help blow back any ceramics that get that far. It was nice seeing the spell on the wizard again, as I forgot that the druid stole this ability in BTD6. Anyway, after picking up this stall, we got down another boomer with plans of making it a lightsaber thrower as well. But then the Moab finally came on round 46. I was a bit worried, but between our boomers and Moab maulers, we popped it fairly easily. Over the next 10 rounds, we just placed bomb shooters or boomerangs and fully upgraded them, getting them all to their cool tier 4 upgrades. While this wasn't popping everything at the very start of the track, we were easily cleaning everything up on the second pass and were never worried about leaking. But after round 56, we unlocked the Ring of Fire. Now, I have no idea if this thing is good or not, but I am sick of just placing boomers and bombs, so I got a tack shooter right above the ice monkey and made it a ring of fire ASAP. This seemed like he was popping tons of balloons near the start, so we got a second tack shooter down over by the wizard. I made sure they were both in range of our monkey beacon, and we got the second one to a ring of fire by the end of round 59. With these two in place, we seemed much better at handling ceramics, whether they spawned in naturally or if they came out of a Moab. And that's a good thing, because round 60 brings a BFB. Our maulers and boomers popped it and three of the four Moabs inside on the first pass, leaving us with tons of ceramics and a Moab to pop in the middle. And boy, were our defenses ready because not a single balloon made it past our wizard. But the rest of the game was very easy. All we did was place down lightsaber throwers anytime we had the money, and the balloons didn't stand a chance. I was hoping we'd unlock some more tier 4 upgrades during this time that we could show off, but nothing really came out of it. I will say though, round 75 was harder than I thought it'd be, as quite a few balloons made it to the very end, but between our towers and some spike piles, we popped everything and beat BTD4 on chimps. On to BTD5 the game we all love. Luckily, I'm level 24 in this one, so we have plenty of upgrades unlocked, so no grinding is needed. We booted up Monkey Lane on hard and started with a Ninja in the middle, a classic start that works to this day in BTD6. Once we had the money, we bought Ninja Discipline and Seeking Shurikens to make him an early game monster. The nice thing about BTD5 is that Ninja Key we went back to making the upgrades a two-path system, so you can choose what upgrades you want on your towers, and you can still get up to tier 4 upgrades. This Ninja was doing so well that we upgraded him to a 201, meaning we bought two upgrades in the first path and one upgrade in his second path. This lets his shurikens pop more blooms per throw, attack faster, and have a homing in effect on blooms. From here, I wasn't sure what to get, so we just started saving money. Before I knew it, we had almost $1,000 and the blooms still weren't getting past the start of the track. 
So we spent $920 upgrading our ninja to a double shot, making him twice as good. This guy was destroying the rounds, but he can't go on soloing the game forever, no matter how much I'd like him to. So on round 14, we went back to our roots and got a bomb shooter. Now we have every type of balloon covered as the ninja can pop camos and the bomb shooter can take out leads. But this let us go all the way to round 22 before balloons even made it halfway through the track. When they did get this far though, a blue managed to get completely by. So we spent the money we'd been saving on a dartling gunner and put it at the very right side of the map. We made this startling a 1-1, giving it better accuracy and more pierce and started flying through the rounds. Once we could afford it, we upgraded it to attacking faster and eventually gave it the ability to pop every type of balloon, so this thing was a menace at the back of the track. We needed more damage though and our bomb shooter was just sitting there unupgraded. So we made it a 3-2, which in short makes its explosions much bigger and gives it more popping power. These cluster bombs are amazing at taking out large rushes of balloons, which is what we'll be facing for the next several rounds. But this combo combination of towers let us save up three grand and purchase the balloon jitsu upgrade on our ninja in the middle of round 38. He now throws five shurikens per attack, which is devastating for the balloons. This worked well for a bit, but round 41 showed us we needed more. So we got another 3-2 bomb shooter in the middle and went back to popping the balloons at the start of the track. And with this, we were able to upgrade our dartling gunner to a 3-2 laser cannon, an absolutely massive increase in DPS. As long as I aim him correctly, we should be fine for a while, which means we can set up our ice monkey. In in BTD5, this guy had infinite pierce, meaning if you do it right, he can freeze every balloon for you. You just need to set it up. So we put him about halfway through the track and made him a 2-2. His next upgrade, Arctic Wind, is super expensive, so we won't get it for a while, but I wanted to reserve his spot right here on the curve for us to build around. But this brings us to round 46 and the first Moab of the run. We didn't have any anti-Moab towers set up, but between our bombs, ninja, and constantly aiming the laser cannon, we were able to pop the round by the start of our ice monkey. Then we went back to defense as usual, but the end of round 47 was full of camos. Sure, they were easy for us to pop, but I figured it was time to get a village and make them a non-factor going forward. We got one down and made it a 2-2 as fast as possible, which gives all affected monkeys extra pierce, camo detection makes them cheaper, and attack faster. This took us a few rounds to get down as the rounds weren't giving us much money, but that changed in round 49 as the next few gave us several thousand dollars to work with. We spent this money on three bomb shooters, making them all 2-3s which specialize in blimp damage. We set them to strong so they'd focus down these tanky layers, and the rest of our defenses can target the Inside. This timing was near perfect as several Moabs started coming every round, but even with this, Bloon started making it to the second pass of the map. But because no Moabs were getting that far, I spent the money upgrading the Ice Monkey to an Arctic Wind, which should be able to freeze everything that gets to it except for Whites and Zebras. To get some more ceramic popping power, we bought two more Cluster Bombs and then bought two Rings of Fire. The first was right next to the Ice Monkey to pop any frozen balloons, and the other was right up front inside the second turn. I made sure both of these were inside the range of the village and hoped that this would even out our weakness to black and zebra bloom. But then round 63 was upon us and its dreaded ceramic rushes. All three of them made it to our second ring of fire, but in the middle of the round, we bought the Monkey Intelligence Bureau upgrade. This made the third rush easier than the first two, even though it's bigger than the others, because now all of our monkeys can pop every type of bloom. Instantly, we could feel the improvement as ceramics were melting faster than ever before, and round 64 didn't make it to our ice monkey. But now that we were in the mid 60s, it was clear we'd be facing tons of Moabs and BFBs. We spent the next 10 or so rounds placing Moab Maulers at the front of the track and setting them to strong to take out these tanky layers as fast as possible. Ideally, we'd use the Bloon Chipper for this stage of the game, but because I'm playing on the Ninja Kui Archive, that's not available to us. Oh well. After we had eight Maulers up front, we had to work on our cleanup. So we placed four more cluster bombs by the ninja. I'm not sure if these are the best ceramic killers in BCD5, but they were doing a good enough job that I figured I'd just spam them. On round 78, I had the genius idea to get a spike storm, but after placing down our factory, I realized we had zero XP on it. So we just have a base spike factory at the exit holding things down. For the rest of the game, we slowly upgraded our cluster bombs to balloon impacts. This was pretty expensive, so we couldn't upgrade them all, but round 85 was here and we had almost eight grand to spend. We got down another Moab mall and upgraded one of our bomb shooters to a Moab Assassin. This guy has an ability that does 1000 damage to ZOMGs, which is what we're about to face. I used this ability right at the start of the round, and I'm actually not sure if it did anything because of how far away the bomb shooter was. But even with this potential misfire, we were able to take down the ZOMG and all of its children before they even made it halfway through the track, beating BTD5 on chimps, and all that's left is BTD6, my bread and butter. Now, I was going to do a normal chimps run like all the other BTD games before it, but I thought, why not try to beat chimps with only two monkeys? 
one of which being the new Mermonkey that came out a week ago. So with that, we hopped into a game of chimps with only a Buccaneer and Mermonkey. The start was simple, place a buck in the middle of the map and save up until we can afford Grape Shot. This gives it several extra projectiles per attack, making it much stronger. Then we picked up long range and crow's nest so it could see more of the track and hit camos. In a normal game, we could just get a village for camo detection later on, but because we're trying a 2TC, we'll want both of our towers to be able to see them naturally. Another thing we'll want is lead popping power on both towers, so we upgraded our buck to a 022, which lets its grape shots start balloons on fire and pop leads. But now it was time to get the mer monkey. This tower can be placed on water or land, so we could really put it wherever. But because it gets more range in the water, we put it right next to the boat. We also made this guy a 022 as it gives it seeking attacks, camo detection, and we'll be upgrading its middle path later on. From here, things got pretty easy. We upgraded the boat to a 032 cannon ship, which adds a powerful bomb attack to each side of the ship, and then we made the Mermonkey a Riptide Champion. This makes its tridents increase in damage and size the further they travel, making it a solid balloon popper, especially since its attacks can freeze balloons. The only problem is that neither of our monkeys are very strong against blimps, and round 40 brings a Moab. Luckily, this map is super long, letting these guys whittle down the Moab layer, popping it about halfway through the map, and they cleaned up the inside shortly after. But this Moab basically gave us the money to upgrade our Mer Monkey to an Arctic Knight. This gives it lead popping power, makes its tridents grow in power even faster, and gives it the ice jet ability that we'll talk about later. From here, we coasted over 20 rounds trying to save up $56,000 for the pop side and upgrade. BTD6 is the first game with tier 5 upgrades, and they are usually very expensive but equally as powerful. Getting to a tier 5 upgrade will make this 2TC much easier and we'll want to get there as fast as possible. But the 60s had other plans. These rounds were constantly making us use the ice jet ability, which shoots a barrage of ice balls dealing massive damage and freezing balloons. We had to use this on the BFB to break it down to ceramics and again on the fortified moabs that end round 62. But this left us without it for round 63, and with it on cooldown, the first ceramic rush blew right past us. To get around this, we had to delay our pop side and upgrade and purchase the box tier 4 upgrade, Monkey Pirates. This adds two cannons to each side of the ship, cannon attacks do more damage, and it gains an ability that harpoons in a blimp that's a BFB or smaller. This extra damage not only let us beat round 63, but also let us cruise through round 75 where we could afford pop side in, the first tier 5 upgrade of the video. This Mermonkey now throws three tridents per attack, throws them twice as often, and they deal more damage each. Not to mention that its ability got much better. Needless to say, our defenses just got a massive upgrade. Now, we just had to save up for the Pirate Lord on the Buccaneer. This makes everything about it better, but the coolest part is how its ability changes. Now, he has six hooks that can each drag in a blimp, but the ZOMGs take three hooks each to pull in, so you can't just drag everything down. The ability recently got changed to this, so I had to play around with it, and I started pulling in blimps on round 89. Here, we pulled in six fortified BFBs with the click of a button. Talk about a satisfying way for a tower to deal 33,000 damage. But with this, we were in the 90s. I thought we would struggle with DDTs here, but we managed to pop them very early, not even having to use hook on them. This really showed itself on round 93, where the six DDTs barely even made it to the water, let alone through the rest of the map. So I let myself use the hook on BFBs again. I probably should be saving this for times that we absolutely need it, but it was too much fun. The next few rounds, we kind of just hooked willy-nilly, like on 97 where we dragged in both fortified ZOMGs, ending the round in just a few seconds. But 98 through 100 are where things get interesting. Hook was on cooldown, and we were up against the largest round of the game. I was a bit scared, but we let our towers attack until Hook was off cooldown. Here, we used both abilities, pulled in two ZOMGs, and watched the bouncing ice ball shred the round. This was surprising to say the least, and I actually wanted it to do worse so that we could have Hook back off cooldown earlier. The reason for this? Route 99 has nine fortified DDTs. We've been handling normal ones fine so far, but fortified ones are always scary as they have twice the health, and DDTs are so fast that the extra health can make a huge difference. But by the time six of them were on screen, we had our Hook back, so we dragged them in. Then we only had to deal with the final three, popping the last of the balloons about 75% of the way through the map. And that just leaves round 100. Here we just have to pop one more blimp, the bad. It has 28,000 health and plenty of children inside it. Now, neither of these towers deal much single target damage, so we spammed Ice Jet whenever possible to whittle down this purple whale. We didn't pop this outer layer until it was halfway through the map, but the second it popped, we used the Pirate Lord's hook, dragging in the DDTs and a ZOMG, leaving just one green turtle to deal with. And that is something we can do, especially since Ice Jet is back up once again. But just like that, we beat Chimps on BTD 1 through 6. If you liked that challenge, you should check out me beating all 14 game modes of frozen over without reusing a single monkey or hero by clicking this video right here.